Trevor Podolsky, you're under arrest for vandalism and destruction of property. But Dad! What are you doing? I told you to back off, Peralta. First off, the name's Santiago. Detective Amy Santiago. Second, I'm arresting your son, which, as I say it aloud, seems like an unwise choice. But it's the one I'm making. Once again, my name is Amy Santiago. It's just a car. He's not gonna be that mad. Son of a bitch! Okay, I misjudged that one. Oh, what did he do to you, Gertie? What did he do? It was an accident, sir. Yes, an accident. The buffoon's apology. This is your fault, mister. Interesting. Charles, do you feel that's the case? Um, your car is pretty far over the line. Mm. So, it's kinda your fault, too. Pass the blame. The buffoonery is endless. You're gonna pay for what you've done, and it won't be cheap. They'll have to custom mix the color because they no longer make raspberry sherbet. Look at this, evidence was compromised. Oh no, the shirt from the DeKalb Street murder. That's the only hard evidence we have. ADA Green's already mad we didn't find anything else. Why is this on your desk, Peralta? I logged it out for trial, but Officer Howard is the one who got it from the evidence locker. Let's blame him. He's always up to no good. What? You don't even know me. Yes, I do. Then what's my last name? I thought it was Howard. It's Booth. My name is Howard Booth. OK, fine. But just so you know, the only thing I'm going to remember from this interaction is that you put me on the spot, so. Hey, Boyle, I know you haven't had Peralta as a secondary in a while. Be careful. It can be rough. Hey, saboteur. That's not true. I happen to be a very good secondary. So you were just borrowing those cars? Ask him about his bank account. Ask him about his bank account. Ask him about his bank account. You should ask him about his bank account. Captain, Santiago broke the glass. Wait. Room 410 is this way. OK, we got him here with one minute to spare. Yes, I knew we could make it. All right, Sarge, you ready to go in there and ace this thing? Yeah, I can't believe it. I'm going to be a pilot. OK, well, that's not great. Well, there's no way you can take the test in that condition. You're right, Amy. You're going to have to crawl inside his shirt and operate his arms for him. It's a ratatouille situation. On it. No, it's over. We have to go in there and tell them that he won't be making it. <sighs> so that's it, then. Rosa, you should probably go in first, since this is mostly your fault. Dude. All right, fine, I'll do it. Jeez. Where are you going? The boss is taking heat for something that's not even his fault. I can't let that happen. Wait, damn it. Look, it's not your fault either, and it's not the vulture's fault. It's Amy's. I know, I know, it's mine. It's mine, okay? God, I do not love how this worked out. Oh, God, they're gonna shut this precinct down and separate me and Jake. Our friendship is over. If he doesn't see my face every day, he'll forget who I am. He's like a goldfish. <laughs> This is all your fault. You just had to sleep with Teddy, didn't you? You couldn't keep it in your pants. Come on, Charles. He's right, Santiago. Your libido has endangered us all. OK, Boyle, and only because you insist that I say this, it's time to drop a deuce. And now, the Jake and Bake. Whoa, come on, Amy. Not cool. That's a guy. This page about how my life is New York, and I love the Chantilly Ecru paper for place cards. That is an excellent choice. Those are all excellent choices. You can do this. You're a smart and wonderful man. With fantastic handwriting. Sure, with fantastic handwriting. You really think so? Yeah, I think that you could be a professional calligrapher. Charles, a professional calligrapher. You can do anything, including but not limited to talking to Vivian. Right, right, right. Look, I know it's gonna be hard, and she might even get mad at you, but I promise you we'll be back to doing weird sex stuff together in no time. <sighs> All right. All right. I'm gonna go talk to Vivi. Great idea, buddy. Huh? Yep. Yeah. So who's gonna pay for the paper? It's gonna be $250? Her name is Amy Santiago. Yeah, there's uh, good news and there's bad news. The bad news is my saltwater taffy place was closed. And the good news? Whitman's alibi checked out. Security footage from Torque shows he was there. That's not good news. That's bad news. Right. That is bad news. Sorry, it's on me. No, Detective Scully, it's on Peralta. No, Captain. That's on Santiago. It's on me. It's still on me. I don't think your wrist is supposed to move like that. No, OK. It's been like this since I broke up playing football in high school. Fine, I petted a horse too hard. If that woman posts her camera phone video that she took with a camera phone camera to the internet, figures could figure out where we are. This is your fault. Or maybe it's your fault for stealing my files. You know what? It doesn't matter. 
We have to get that video. Can we please just press pause on this fight and work together? Yes, on one condition. You stay the hell away from my walking group. The walking group meant nothing to me. That's even worse. Jake, will you join me in Terry's office? Oh. Private rendezvous, huh? This whole trying to make a baby thing has got you super freaky. Terry, what's up, dude? What did you think was happening? He clearly thought you were gonna have secret sex in here. <laughs> what? In a probes much? I did not think that. Amy did. She texted me about it. See, proof. Anyway, what's up, Lieutenant? This is on you, Boyle. Can just suck it up and let a few dozen crazed rats eat you until their hearts exploded. Don't blame Boyle. The rats only got into the cocaine because you put the traps in the evidence room. We were gonna use the break room, but Gina was in there. And she got hit by a damn bus, so nobody can say no to her. No signs of forced entry at the door, but the window was jimmied. You don't have locks on your windows. Way to blame the victim. Sorry I'm not rich like you, Miss 1%. They cost $8. You have a fur bedspread. Well, I got a bean to boil, too. Santiago always tries to finish my sentences and frequently gets it wrong. I do not, and I am not wrong. You do it all the time. No, I was going to say all the day long. See? Frequently wrong. I dog sat for Scully, and he never thanked me. Kelly was a real handful. Wait, I'm confused again. Kelly was a dog? There were two Kellys. You'd know that if you'd ever listened to my podcast. OK, dude, just relax. Don't tell us to relax just because you're too nice to have any pet peeves. Oh, Terry's got peeves. Terry hates the way you always make mouth noises when you eat. Nyam, nyam, I'm Rosa. I'm eating a croissant. Nyam, nyam. How's this for a mouth noise? You suck. No, you suck. As do you, as do you, and you. Oh, yeah? Well, you're all a bunch of floats. Well, this is the float right here. <laughs> you are the what definite man at the moment. Yeah, you stick it over right here. This neighborhood's amazing. Class just seeps out of every vestibule. Keep it in your pants, Santiago. Skelly, hmm? I specifically said no shorts. Sarge, it's not my fault. You said so many things about shorts, I got confused. We barely got to know her. And now we never will. I feel so bad for them, but what do you say to someone that suffered this kind of loss? I mean, it's kind of on them for not checking the voltage on a machine that had a built-in air fryer. Don't blame the victim, Amy. This is a nightmare. This is worse than my sixth birthday party when I caught my dad making out with a female clown in the bounce house. <sighs> God, my dad is the worst. I know, he's ruining the whole day. <sighs> yeah, but, you know, don't just blame my dad. You literally just said he's the worst. I know, it's okay when I say it. You have to pretend like he's cool, those are the rules. Plus, you gotta admit, your parents were being a little condescending. Why? Because they asked what was in the dip that seemed to be just mayo? All dip is just mayo, yes! But no, what I was referring to is the fact that your mom brought her own hand towels, as if my mom wouldn't have washed hers knowing they had guests coming over. Did she? No, you don't have to. They're only touched by freshly clean hands. They never get dirty. Wow. What's up, Sarge? You just digging through the garbage like a normal person? I'm trying to find out who our leak is. What makes you so sure that there's a leak? It might have just been that the reporter was really good at his job, like that hot blonde surfer was at TMZ. Maybe you leaked it. Excuse me? I'm not saying you did it on purpose. Uh, maybe you left the file on the subway. I mean, you don't take your job very seriously. Whoa, we're about to have our first fight as a couple, Terrence. First of all, I take my job very seriously. That's why I'm here right now helping you, and I'm the only one doing it. Or I was, until you insulted me. Now watch me walk away. So sorry. <sighs> oh, he's so disappointed. Look, I'm sorry that I got you involved in this. I never should have volunteered us. No, Jake, it's not your fault. It's Amy's. What? Well, it's not my fault. Blind. <sighs> and Jake's not the one who let Cheddar go to town in Kevin's sweaters. Please, it's not like I fed him Kevin's sweaters. Bingo! What are you doing here? I, what, I'm not, what are you doing here? I need to find a New Yorker that Kevin left by the bed so I can justify this whole pro-slavery stance I've backed myself into. Detectives! Sarge, I see that you, like I, came up here to chastise Santiago. Amy, this is low, even for you. I cannot believe you would both violate the please stay downstairs rule, which was prominently posted. You are actually in the right in this sitch. The captain is being irrational, but he's about to learn himself a lesson right about now. Oh my. Ow, timed it perfectly. What? What did you do to my cupcake? This is yours? Why on earth is your cupcake on my chair? Because it's very special to me, so I can put it wherever I want. This is your fault. Now you have to buy me a new cupcake. Well, this is outrageous. You expect me to avoid 
Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do. The cupcake was Gertie. Yes. Your butt was Charles's car. Yes. The chair was the parking space. Yes, I get it. Your office was the garage. Yes, I'm telling you, I understand the lesson. And I was the brilliant Gina Linetti in both scenarios. All right, we're done here. Okay. You're a great captain. <laughs>